Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Well, I'm working on something completely different than what I normally work on. What am I working on? I'm actually working on my mower deck. I had to take it out, gotta fix it. When I bought it, this caster over on this side was broken off, so I don't have it. So I have to make a bracket or something that'll work with a wheel. I got new wheels for this thing too. The reason I took it off is, is twofold here. This bearing is shot, and as you can see, this one's already been replaced once, but it's shot, and this, you hear it? Is shot. Now, there's other things I could do to this thing. Um, I'm going to be replacing those towers, those uh, bearing towers. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but I'm going to be replacing those. And the brake, this is a brake right here. And this actually stops. See how this side I can't turn, but this side I can. There was pieces missing here. I cannot locate them. I, I mean, I can, but I'm not spending $120 on a bracket and everything else. And I'm honestly, I don't really care all that much because when I shut the mower down, that thing comes to a stop pretty quick. So I'm really not that concerned about it. Besides, it's protected. So what I did do was I picked up a kit. <laughs> it's actually two kits. One was a caster kit, which is the four casters and the hardware. The other kit I picked up were these towers or stanchions or whatever in the world you want to call these things. And it came with two of these, came with the hardware, nuts. It came with two pulleys, as you see here. And it came with the blades, and I think they said the belt, and the belt. So it came with all of that. So I figured I gotta fix this thing because it's really cutting awkward on the, on the grass because I, I raised the height. If I have the height of just at a very low level, it cuts perfectly even. But if I raise it up or whatever, because this one side sits low, it has a tendency to dip and it creates lines in the grass. And of course it's not very sightly, but is what it is. So I figure, all right, you can watch me fix this thing. I've actually never done one of these, but I figured how difficult could it really be? I don't think it's gonna be all that difficult. So, all right, um, yeah, so let's get started with this. The most complicated thing I think is I'm gonna have to make something for that side and I think I gotta fix this side here because this side looks like it's starting to crack in there. And I would say that yes, that's a crack. So I'm gonna have to grind that down and weld that up too. So somebody has done some repair welds on this thing in the past and this one's starting to break through. So I'm gonna have to get in there and try to fix that one also may help doing some of this from underneath but yeah i figured what the heck you guys can watch me do this let me get this thing flipped over and then um then we'll start uh fixing this thing so now first and foremost we're going to take the blades off and that is a uh let's see on this it's a 15 16. I've changed blades before, but I've never had a reason to go any further than that. So really not that big a deal getting those off. And then you have bolts that hold those towers in place here. They appear to be 13s. I have a wrench here. Yeah, the 13s. All right. Let me go grab a socket for that. Okay, so got a socket. So that one side is off. This side had much longer bolts. I don't know why. I noticed that from the other side because they were going right through. Somebody re probably replaced one of these towers before. All right, so now we'll just flip it back over and 
take these out. So these are junk completely. Whoop. Didn't mean to disturb the camera. I guess, yeah, I'm going to want to clean some of this stuff up. So now i got to look what actually holds its bearings in place. And as you can see, the belt gets locked in between there. So I just kind of got to remember how this goes. That's a 14 on that side. There's a nut underneath this, or a bolt rather, underneath this. I'm sorry. You kind of were. Okay. is an access hole underneath the deck to get this bolt out if you need it to. I don't know if I'm going to be that concerned about it to be honest with it. Okay, so now this side okay this side is a little bit different. It's 214. Let me go get another 14. Hang on a minute. Alright so may as well do this one the easy way. Gun up on here. I don't know if I had the gear wrench in the right direction. All right. See, this bearing actually sounds okay, but since I bought the kit, we're replacing everything. She has a stop on it to line it up with a hole on here. See that? You got that hole? So it'll line that up to that for when you tighten it down. And the same with this one. It has that little nipple there, and that'll catch that hole right there. All right, so now the belt can come off because that's garbage. Alright, so what we're going to do is let me get this thing outside so I can blow this thing off and clean it up. I'm not going to bother washing it down, I'm just going to use compressed air and clean it up. So let me do that. Okay, this is a test video, test one, two, three. Okay, so we got it pretty much cleaned up. It wasn't going to go bananas. Now the new towers here, they actually have a grease fitting on them. So the grease fitting, I'm going to face it outward on both of them. This way, it's just easier to grease up if I ever have to, if I ever decide to, probably won't, but you never know. Um, while, I'm, while it's in service, you know, while I'm using it at home, so. Now, it's just a simple matter of getting this up in place. Now, this side has the brake. Sometimes the brake is a little funky to deal with. I just had to maneuver it in a way that allow me to get this in place. I'm dealing with on this side that's 
giving me a little bit of grief. I'm manipulating it with my left hand. Tighten this up. Always bring them down just snug. No matter what you're doing, bring all the bolts down first. Whether it's this, working on a car, whatever you're doing, if you have multiple bolts, bring them all down first. And then always bring them down to the correct torque spec. Now that's down to the correct ugga duggas. So now we can actually switch to the other side. And as you see the grease fitting, I hope you can see how the grease fitting is right there. So now, just move this in a way so I can get to the other one here. Now this side does not have a brake on it. As you saw, so this should be a little bit easier. said, bring them down. There must have been a booger on that bolt. And then like I said, always torque properly. came in a nice vibrant neon green color. I don't know why, but they did. Hope you can see what I'm doing over here. I know I have a tendency to go off on a tangent. And then I forget that I'm filming actually. have a geared cog on them so they'll only fit on one way. And now the thing is you can accidentally put them on the wrong way. As you can see with that. So you can't put them on the wrong way. The thing is these blades don't this this arch does not fit down. It fits or it's meant to go upward. Like that. And like that, because the reason for that is when the blades are spinning, they draw the grass up towards it. It's like a fan, so it creates a suction and draws everything up. This way it draws it up and will actually blow it out. So now, Get your nuts and you stick your nut on there. Now, when you're doing this, make sure you get the nut as far down as you can and make sure that the blade is on there and centered. Because if you don't and you have the blade off, like it's not actually sitting on the on the splines or on those gears or knots or whatever you call them, you can actually tighten this up wrong and then you're going to wind up with a, either a heck of a vibration or you're going to mess up that tower and the blade. So get them down, nice. 
And there again, you tighten, tighten the correct torque spec specification. are not as sharp as people would think. I mean, you're not going to cut your hand on this when it's just sitting like this. They're not that sharp. Because I've seen people, they want to sharpen them up so much that, you know, you could slice a piece of paper with them. It's not necessary. It's not what they're, it's not how they're designed. All right, so now with that being said and done, we're going to flip this over. With that being said and done, yeah, I'm just not even going to bother with it. it. It doesn't, it doesn't concern me. So now, what I got to do is I have to get those pulleys in place. Oh, the nice thing is they give you a little diagram over here for belt routing, in case you forget. Like me, I'll forget two minutes after I take something apart. So let's get the belt. Do is just lay the belt in place. Like such. It's going to have to come up like this. And the reason you want to lay the belt in now is because these brackets here, which are slightly bent, I'm going to have to straighten these out. I don't know if you can see that. See how it's slightly bent here, and then it brings this, instead of being in this position, it brings it like this. So I'm going to straighten these out because this helps keep the belt in place while you're mowing, especially when you shut the blades off. When you shut the blades off, and I've done this plenty of times on this deck, is I've thrown the belt, so, and it's because of this. So let me actually straighten this out first. All right, so I got this. Let me straightened out as best I could, as you see there. So now, this one, this side was actually missing an upper washer, I realized. So now, what I gotta do is get everything together as a sandwich here. Line them up through the holes. for now while I'm doing this, but only up until I get it roughly snug. That's when I'll actually care about it.
the end of this is not true. Okay, that's why I'm having a problem. The end of this is actually not true for it to catch this. So every time I try putting it on there, I can catch it, but as soon as I get to that point here where I tighten it up, when I go to tighten it up, it wants to lift up because this isn't true. Okay, let me, let me straighten this out real quick. I didn't see that before. Hang on. Okay, so what I did was very subtle, and you're not really going to be able to see it, but it catches the stop. See that? So that's kind of what I wanted. So now, what we have to do... Let's move on to this one here. Like I said, this is all new to me. I really have never, I mean, I have done some stuff, but really haven't had a need to do a whole bunch of work before on one of these things. All right, so here I got the washer in place, putting the bolt down. So now I've got to catch the belt. And then the pulley's got to go through. The bracket, if I of course, get hung up in my hand here. See, now this one is definitely. This one locks a little better than the other one. I think the other one was just worn out because somebody had just, like I said, replaced the pulley at some point. So who knows what happened, but it probably damaged the brackets a little bit. No big deal. Really not a big deal at all. And let's see, what we're going to do if I tighten this up using the other better machine. spot because now the bolt is coming down to being tight. Okay. So I'm good with that. Just basically making sure it's tight. Now I get the belt lined up. Now the last part of this particular puzzle are the end covers because the end covers also help keep the belt in place. And I had a problem with them, so I have to figure out, well, I don't remember what the problem was, but it was when I first got the mower, and I had taken them off. So I think they're both the same. They actually see that, that's actually to help hold the belt in place. I think you saw that, right? Yeah, that's to help hold the belt in place. Let me just back you up a bit. Like I said, I know I go off on tangents here and there. It's just the beauty of me. Alright, I am missing some hardware, I know that, so I might have to go find some that'll work. 
basically just need one more of these or something close to it. Let me go find that and I'll be right back. So I found a bolt that can work. It's like a self-tapping type, or not a self-tapping, but like a coarse thread, and that'll work just fine. Somebody put a nut on the other side of this and was holding this cover upward. That's what the problem was. All right, let me go get this apart and let me see if I can find another one of those bolts. All right, so I found a bolt not the same as the other one, but close enough. Happens to be metric, no, but it should work out. Socket doesn't exactly fit it right because the other socket I had is for three eighths. And because it's metric, it's making different threads. Alright, so there we go. All of that's on. Alright, fantastic. Alright, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to change those wheels, all of those wheels that I have on there. These three, I'm going to, actually, what I might do is I'm going to take this off first, and I'm going to probably weld the couple of cracks that I have in here. Let's do all of that first. different. All right, let me go grab a different tool for this. So yeah, let's just get all of these wheels off of here. I'll just make my life easier. Throw these out. I always hold on to the hardware because, you know what, hardware comes in handy. go get a uh, ratchet because that's not going to work for let me get something for the half inch gun hang on Like I said, the wheels are garbage. No reason to hold on to them. You can see somebody else had fixed this one once before. Look at, look at the glob of welds on there. I mean, it's holding, it's tight, it's not cracking. So, I mean, it looks doesn't look good, but it's holding. So this thing, wow, this thing is pretty well worn in there. It's got a heck of a groove in it. Can you see it? I 
That is actually dug in. Okay. Whatever. I'm going to work with what we got. So let me inspect everything, see what needs to be welded, and then I'm going to clean up those areas, and then we're going to weld it. So really the only places I could find cracks are here on the bottom, see that? And then in here, and then this, I'm not even sure if it's really cracked, but I'm going to hit it with a weld anyway. So we're going to do those first. Then we're gonna get the wheels on the spots that can take a wheel. Then we're gonna to have to make something up for that spot. Fair warning here. I am not a welder. I have never claimed to be a welder. So, just saying. I can get by, but not fantastic. <laughs> so, um, all right, let me get this welded up. I'm not gonna show you me welding this because I'm afraid of ruining the camera. All right, let's get this done. Not horrible, not fantastic. I could do better with a better welder. This is a Yes welder, you know, one of those, basically the least expensive one you could probably get on Amazon. It works well, it works well, but if I had like a Miller or something like that, I could probably do a little bit better. My biggest problem with this welder is this. It has so many different settings, like to adjust absolutely everything. Honestly, all I need to know is wire speed and thickness, or, you know, thickness of the metal, like, which is what, like, millers usually do. They tell you how thick you want it. Is the metal you're welding, and what wire speed you want. That's it. This thing's got infinite adjustments. Drives me mental. But anyway, so, down to this. I mean, you know, not horrible. I think I did okay right there. You can see the top is a little bit boogered because I realized I missed a couple of spots. I did it a few times. Um, but yeah, not bad. This is where I actually started. And you can see it's kind of boogery. But also I couldn't get in there very well to clean up. So had I been using like, a, you know, basically clean metal, it would have been much, much better. Like the bottom weld here, I was able to clean pretty good. So it came out decent. Like I said, I'm not a welder. But I can get by with that, and I'm happy with that. All right, so next step is we're going to put the wheels on this thing all in the same position, and then I want to measure and make sure that the deck is sitting where it's supposed to be. Like, let's just say if it's in that hole there, and I'm actually going to drop it one because uh, I want this deck to sit a bit higher. I'm going to drop it one, and then I want to see when this thing's level where it's actually sitting, because maybe it is sitting a little uh, cockeyed, like maybe this is bent or that's bent or whatever. So I'm gonna do that and I wanna try to figure out where it's supposed to be and then this way I can figure out what I gotta do there and try to find a piece of steel that I can weld to it and put a caster on. So, all right, let's get those all mounted up and we're gonna go from there. I was looking around and I came across a couple different brackets. I don't know, somebody created this for something, I don't know what, but I was trying to see a think of something that I could use and this actually seems like it's pretty dang close to what I need something like this 
I mean, I could even mount it out like this. I'd have to grind it back down. Mount it out like this, but the problem is it's too tall. I'd have to have something coming down, but I guess I could use another bracket, either bolted or I could weld it to this. Somebody painted something. I don't know. But, uh... Yeah, I think I'm going to figure something out with this. This is actually work pretty good. You know what these are? These are two torque converter holders. And we have a ton of these plates laying around. See, it says something on there. I don't remember. Commercial forms. Okay. So, yeah, I think I can use this. I'll just have to figure something out. Maybe I can mount it like this at a slight angle and then just bend it. I don't know. Let me think of something. Let me grind the back of this down and get it flush. So what I did do is I ground down the back side of that and I bent it also in the vise. So now, oh, I also have to remount that hole. And as you see, that actually should work out pretty darn good. I, I think that'll be perfect. See, think about it. This thing really shouldn't be under all that much pressure. These these wheels are in conjunction with the cables and brackets that hold this thing up off the ground. So, you know, and I have one more adjustment on there if I, for some reason, might need it. It's a little more extreme than on that side, but this should work for what I want. All right, let me clean that up and then let me weld that. I tell you what, I really need a lot of practice with this welder. I was having a heck of a time getting this thing to weld um, anything decent, and uh, I don't know if it's the metal or whatever, but I just kept on playing with it and playing with it, and of course, the last part that I decided to weld, I think, came out pretty dang good. So <laughs> let me just show you this. This is pretty cobbled up, but... And no, I didn't weld that front one, but it almost looks like I did. So there, as you see, it's a pretty crappy weld. I don't know why, I just could not get the weld to stick right. But then by the time I got to the back where I adjusted it well, you know, I just kept on playing with the adjustment the whole time. And then the back part there, I got the weld pretty darn good. If I could have gotten the whole thing like that, I would have been happy. Basically, it boils down to practice. If you pick up a welder for yourself um, and you don't know how to weld, really all it boils down to is practice. All right, so I'm going to let this cool off. I don't care what that looks like. Like I said, this is nothing. This is just for, obviously, for the tractor. So I'm really, I don't care. I'm not concerned. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to let that cool off. While it cools off, um, I'm just going to clean up a little bit. And um, then we're going to put that wheel on, and uh, we're going to be done. All right, let's do it. All right, so let's pull this up. I had to tweak that just a little bit more. No big deal. And you need I am. I put away the wrench that I need for this. So let me go grab that. As you can see, I use these blocks here to try to shim up the deck so I got the height about the same all the way around. Like I said, booger weld, but whatever. It's fine. It'll do exactly what I want it to do. All right, I'm gonna get this thing packed up in the back of the truck. It's really not that heavy. Well, surprisingly, I thought it would be much heavier than it actually is. Um, but yeah, we're gonna get this loaded up and then I gotta get going. Um, and it's my granddaughter Aria's birthday. So I gotta get cleaned up and head over for her birthday party. So. 
If you're watching this, are you? Happy birthday. Love you. All right. That's about it, guys. Hopefully you got something out of that video. If you did, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, have a great day. Keep wrenching.